Hello there and welcome. In this video we are talking about coral feeding. Now corals feed in a few different ways. Most people think that they just photosynthesize but in fact they also feed manually. Now to understand how a coral feeds and why it needs to feed, let's have a look at a coral polyp anatomy. So let's just draw a little coral polyp. So if we imagine this is the upper surface of the coral, so that's kind of the, the fleshy part of the coral. What you'll see at night time or during the day when the coral is feeding, there's a little extension that comes out from the surface of the coral. And on this extension, it will have little polyps, little tentacles that stick out from the coral, a bit like that. Now you'll also notice in the center of the coral, there is usually a hole, and that is actually the mouth. Connected to this hole is a stomach. And then below this, we have a little bit more flesh, a little bit like the roots on a tooth, and then that connects back to the flesh. This part here is all coral skeleton. So the actual animal is this here. This is the coral polyp. Now I'll dumb it down and just say that corals feed in two ways. The first way that they feed is through the symbiotic dinoflagellate symbodium which lives within the coral polyps. So if you look at a coral you'll notice that it's a lovely colour and the colours vary and that is all this dinoflagellate symbodium. And they generally live in these polyps. I'll just fill these in. So this is all Symbodium, uh, the more common term for it is zooxanthellae, and it even lives in the flesh along the coral there, and that's what gives it its colour. Now what the symbodium does is it converts light energy into food, the same way that a plant does, because it's basically using the same thing, it's photosynthesis, and this will provide the coral with carbon energy. So through this photosynthesis, it will then produce amino acids, proteins, glucose, carbohydrates, and all sorts of good things for the coral. In turn, the coral gives the zooxanthellae its waste products. So it will provide the zooxanthellae with things like ammonium and other waste products, which that zooxanthellae will then use as food. So it's a symbiotic relationship. Also, in the coral structure itself, you get endolithic algae, which will actually grow on the coralline structure of the coral itself, and it will do a similar thing. It will photosynthesize and provide the coral with much needed resources. Now, the food that the zooxanthellae provide the coral actually makes up 70%, roughly, of the coral's total nutritional needs. You'd think it'd be more than that. It's actually just over two thirds of what the coral needs to survive. And the food that it produces is actually really rich. So it's almost like the coral is eating chocolate every single day. And obviously, if we did that, although we'd have a huge sugar rush and we'd probably survive, we wouldn't be very well. So one of the limitations of photosynthesis and this symbiotic relationship is that it doesn't actually provide all of the organic nitrogen and phosphorus that the coral needs to survive. And the coral needs to get this from somewhere else. So we have photosynthesis and that is done by the zooxanthellae and that provides roughly 70% of the coral's diet. Now what we also then need is a way for the coral to get the rest of that, make up the rest of that nutritional need. So the coral needs to make up this other 30% of its diet. And it does this in a few different ways. It has tentacles, obviously. So the tentacles that protrude from the coral's mouth and around the rim of the coral's mouth at night time, these little tentacles, um, basically when a little brine shrimp or something comes along, it'll snatch that and then it'll just divert it into its mouth and it'll eat that, that little bit of food that is captured. Another way that corals feed is they will actually expel their stomach from their lining. So this normally happens at night time, but if you've ever seen a coral with all these little, um, looks a bit like spaghetti coming out of its mouth, that's actually its stomach coming out. And these are called mesenterial filaments, and it's basically the lining of the stomach wall, and it kind of comes out and it will trap anything that lands on it. And it'll also be used to uh, fight off other corals and digest them, and um, also other things. Now another thing that they use is nematocysts. 
Now, the, so these are basically um, a specialized cell. I'll just draw a cell like that. In this cell, we've got basically a little harpoon. And on this harpoon is toxins. So when a bit of prey comes by, and this can be amphipods, copepods, um, sometimes things as large as fish, these cells fire out their little harpoon and they capture their food and then they drag it back down and then that will then go towards the mouth of the coral and feed the coral. And then lastly another common way for corals to feed is actually to produce a mucus film. So they will release this mucus and then any bits that get stuck to it they'll then suck it back in to feed on it. Now that's a that's very similar way that the mesenterial filament works but it's just a slightly different method of achieving the same thing. So what do they actually eat? So corals can eat quite a lot of different things and they range in size quite a lot. Now in the ocean free floating around there is things like bacteria, there's things like zooplankton, copepods, amphipods, phytoplankton, all these little bits floating around ranging in size from around 2 to 750 microns. Now this is a general overview of feeding so some corals are more specialized in eating larger prey or smaller prey um, or they'll only eat a certain type of copepod or something like that but generally that's the size range that corals can feed on and they are active predators on these little critters in the ocean. They will actively bring out their tentacles, bring out their mesenterial filament and try and capture these prey because this is what is going to make up the 30% of their diet. Now another thing that they can eat from the water and that is dissolved organic materials. Now dissolved organic materials is basically things like glucose, amino acids and other waste things in the water column which they directly absorb into themselves and use. So as you can see, it's very important to feed your corals and not just rely on lighting. Now, lots of people have anecdotally said that they've never fed their corals and their corals have done well, um, they've grown, they're beautifully coloured. Now, the reason for this is it could be that in those particular systems, the needs of the coral feeding is already met. So if you've got a very mature system, you might have enough wild amphipods and copepods to actually be feeding your corals anyway. If you've got enough fish in your system, they might be releasing enough poo from themselves, so that will be the dissolved organic material and also the corals will capture some of this waste material and use as a food source for nitrogen. So it's possible in very large, very mature systems that corals will actually self-sustain based on what's in the tank already free growing. However, in smaller systems or more stark systems where you've just got corals, then you'll definitely need to add some food for your corals to eat because over time they will essentially um, either just starve to death or they can just not grow as well as they should. Now there's been studies done on feeding and not feeding corals and corals that have been fed will actually grow up to 50% faster than corals that aren't fed. So how can you actually feed your corals? Well, there is a lot of different coral foods out there. There are powdered forms of coral food, which you basically mix with a bit of your aquarium water and chuck it in, uh, especially at night time, then you will allow your corals to then take those small particles inside of itself. Um, there's a range of different sizes as well, so you need to look into which corals you have, look at which size they normally try and eat in the wild and match that in terms of the size of the micron of the food. And there's also liquid feeds, um, um, these tend to have a few uh, particles in there for capture, but they generally tend to be a mix of things like glucose and amino acids. So they're a bit of a sports drink for your corals. So thank you for watching. I hope this video has been useful, not too in depth, but just enough so that you can understand and sort of get a grasp on how corals feed. If you want to see more of this kind of content, please remember to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Well, once again, thanks for watching and happy fish keeping.